Alright everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Course Party Book of Shadows. Okay, so I think it maybe it wants me to go up this way now. Or not, the large hole on the floor won't be possible to go further down the hall. So maybe back up here again. I mean I guess he could have went to the pool. Oh, it's trial and error. Okay, why couldn't I go up here? Shake, where are you? I've been looking all over for you. Are you over here? I just want to see you. No, no, stop it, Mayu. If you start crying over something like this, imagine how badly Shake would tease you about it later. Another earthquake. The tremors were so intense, I was unable to keep standing. I fell hard on my bottom and watched as my student ID slipped from my skirt and into a hole. The scrap of paper from the Sachiko charm must have shaken loose in the process. It slipped down and snaked its way haphazardly onto the floor. Well, you need that. Was it finally over? I cautiously pulled myself back to my feet, and that's when I realized that the floor, no, the whole hallway had changed. Cracks and holes in the floor had somehow been sealed up, and a window that was there before was now completely gone. I couldn't really come to terms with what I was seeing. Was this reality? What kind of hell was I stuck in anyway? I was getting goosebumps all over my body and my mind felt like it was shutting down. Then I saw this Chico charm scrap and snapped back to my sense. God, I've got to be more careful. I almost lost this. I scooped it up thinking of Shake standing next to me and everyone else smiling and laughing during that ritual. My body was trembling in fear and my vision was beginning to blur. This place was taking its toll on me. Pleasant memories of friends were all I had left. Why? Why is this happening? So in other words, they won't let us use the cultural assembly stage? Unfortunately not. I got his permission to use it on the phone, but I guess that really doesn't do us any good if the advisor in charge isn't on board. Okay, something nonsense. <laughs> Not much we can do though. Our own advisor isn't exactly known for his enthusiasm and putting on a show outside of school would have its own problems. And you're content to just leave it at that? The script is already finished, you know. Maybe I should try to hand, try my hand at negotiating. Just because they're adults doesn't mean they necessarily deserve all the respectful platitudes we're expected to give them after all. Go for it. What's so funny? Oh, nothing really. I was just thinking how cute you look when you're mad. Don't be stupid. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Really. I'm just happy you're here to get upset over something like this for me. Well, I'm not good with conflict, so it's just kind of refreshing that you get angry in my place. Quirky as ever, I see. By which you mean I've got lots of personality, right? Just another reason I'm the poster girl for the drama club. Yes, I suppose you could say that. Of course, I do more than just act. I also write scripts, I produce, I make costumes. Stuff being such a renaissance woman. You are very strong, my you. You're a strong person. Even when things are looking down, you always have a smile on your face, and you've always been so mindful of family and friends, much more so than I. You're always willing to shed a tear in sympathy when times are tough, no matter who's watching. Come on, Shig, is that supposed to be some kind of pickup line or something? I mean, you're the one who's always saying I'm unreliable. No, I'm simply speaking from the heart here. There are different kinds of strengths in the world, after all. Yours is, how do I put this, yours is bountiful, it's a strength that never falters. No matter what trying times away, no matter how many times you stumble and fall, you're the type who will always get right back up and try again. It's a substantial strength too, substantial enough that even a cold human being like myself can plainly see it. Shig. It's not true, Shig. I, I'm not that strong. 
I'm just good at making myself seem that way in front of other people. But in reality, when I'm faced with uncomfortable situations, I freeze up. I've just been playing a part all this time, the part of the good girl that everybody wants me to be. Shig, save me. You must be laughing right now, say, my you so lost without me, or something. Suzumoto? Suzumoto? Kishinuma, what happened? Why were you sitting in the middle of the hallway? Kishinuma, I'm so glad to see you. Are you okay? Yeah, more or less. How about you, Suzumoto? You don't seem injured or anything. Yeah, I'm fine. Did he see me crying? Hey, uh, you got a little snot there. It's kind of dirty, but you can use my handkerchief if you want. Oh, thanks, but no thanks. You should save that for Shinozaki. Huh? What do you mean? Ah, uh, never mind. Don't worry about it. Just being silly. Um. Okay. Speaking of Shinozaki, though, have you seen her anywhere? No, I haven't. Okay. So this isn't the way she came, I guess. Was Shinozaki with you then? Yeah, up until a short while ago. And then she suddenly started acting weird. It was like she was possessed or something. She started screaming all kinds of crazy things I couldn't understand, then ran off somewhere. Oh no, I don't like that at all. She's got a real affinity with for the spirit world, you know. Maybe that earthquake was somehow connected to her. Actually, about the earthquake. Kishinuma sure was taking his sweet time. He went off to search the poolside area by himself, citing the heavy rain as an excuse for me to stay indoors while he gallantly got soaked in my place. I went along with it because I thought it seemed unusual chivalrous coming from someone like him, but he's a rank amateur in matters of the spirit, so I was beginning to worry he'd gotten himself attacked or something. And that worry was just starting to, just starting to turn to panic when... No good, I think there's something caught in the grate at the bottom, but I can't find any way to drain the water, so I can actually check it out. I did come across a locked pump room, though, so if you find the key and get in there, we might be able to make some progress. I see, that's kind of disappointing. Here I thought we might be onto something, since the whole area has a really weird vibe to it. Hey now, are you forgetting something? I'm the one who's freezing my ass off after scouting around in the pouring rain. How about a little gratitude? Gratitude, as I recall, you said you'd handle this because it was too dangerous for me, so you brought this on yourself. Oh well, yeah, I guess, but it's more like it could hurt to thank me. It's not like it could hurt to thank me. What was that? Nothing. So what do we do now? Well, we can't get up to the second floor, we can no longer reach the staircase past the entrance way on account of the hall splitting in half. There was that earthquake not too long ago, you think that's what split the hall? There's a good possibility. Yeah, it happened right around when the door to this locker room opened up, after all. Do you think maybe our actions are having a direct influence on the building? That sounds like the setup to some loony bent cult fanfic or something. Hey, don't use the word occult like it's some kind of insult. It comes from Latin, you know, occultist meaning hidden, and it's primarily used today to describe paranormal studies, which stands in opposition to... Okay, okay, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Can we save the lecture for another day, please? Believe me, I have a whole new respect for the occult since coming here. I mean, the things that are happening to us sure aren't natural. Hell, we've only been here a few hours and I've already lost count of all the dead bodies and ghosts we've seen. I have no choice but to believe you. Though coming from anybody else, all this talk about other dimensions and spiritual planes and stuff would seem pretty far-fetched, even in here. Reality is pretty persuasive, huh? Has a way of forcing you to accept truths that you might have otherwise struggled with forever. No matter how messed up those truths might be. At any rate, I guess all we can do right now is recheck all the areas we can still get to. So now I'm playing as them. Okay, that's just, I don't know, it seems weird. Check the third from the right. That's totally different from what was written here before. It might have some meaning. A third from the right. What, you talking about this? One. Well, hold up. 
the third from the right, but okay, is it meaning like one, two, three, because from the right, or is it meaning, well, either way, it ends the same. It's the middle. Upon twisting the handle, the tin shower head above, spun silently, and a small bent piece of wire fell out onto the ground. This could come in handy. Okay, yeah, and then there's nothing else in here. Okay, so where... Where's the crack at? Exactly. I mean, from the first game, she went crazy in here, so... Does she go crazy in here again? I don't know, we're in search mode. And there's no body here, which means we're definitely in another dimension from or my you was. Okay, the door's frozen in place, gotcha. So is the crack right here then? The stairwell is packed tightly with deaths, making it completely impassable. No, but we can't go that way nonetheless, so can we go to the second wing? Nope. Gotcha. Whoa, I did not mean to go there. I thought we were further away than that. So how far until we reach a hole here? Or is it going to let me go the whole way? Wow. I was able to go the whole way. The door to classroom 4A is locked. So anything in this hall right here, since it's a dead end, I feel like I should check it. What is a door there? What the hell? Door is frozen in place. But the fuck? What the hell? Door is right there. I don't remember a door being there. And it doesn't show up on the map. Well, we got a ghost in here. A spirit. What you want? Make sure you don't meet his gaze or your soul will be broken. Meet whose gaze? There's a red child drawing on the board that looks kind of like a tomato smashed against the wall. Based on the crudely colored shapes and uneven lines, it was likely drawn by an elementary school student. And the arrows pointing to the tomato was a big label written in sloppy letters. Girl gold splat. There are fully fossilized remains of yet another student. This one seems particularly small. He's probably in 5th or 6th grade at the most. With a name tag attached to his clothing. Okay, so don't meet the gaze of somebody. Like, this is the janitor's room right here, right? Yeah. Custodian's closet is frozen in place. Was well, there anything here? No? Nothing? There's gotta be something somewhere around here because there's nowhere else to go. And there's a lot of hallway right here that I didn't really check. Oh, there's the exit. I mean, I guess the pool itself, but it did say that there was nothing there. Yeah, we'll just go straight to the pool. I really do not like having to check each and every one of these hallways. I meant to go to the pool, but, you know, it's whatever. Under the body right there. Anything else that I can like examine? There's a comparatively fresh cord floating in the pool. It looks to be that of a female middle school student based on a uniform and relative size. The back of her head seems to have been bashed in really white skull and pink brain tissue through the parts in her hair. She must have been struck pretty hard. Her student ID name is floating right next to her with big bold letters making it legible even from a distance. 
so great. That means there's something in one of these freaking halls. Hmm? Oh, it's having me face the locker room. Okay. It's just lost. Like, where the hell? Like, it's just, I don't even know what I'm looking for. I mean, yeah, there's like literally nothing in any of these. The only thing I can say is like that classroom that I was actually able to go into. Because like nothing. Like I'm just doing real quick look overs of these halls. To see if I can find anything. They're like, well, okay, there's a body in this one. It's a decayed court based on how fitted height it appears to be a junior high school girl or the student ID on the tag or on the ground. Okay, so we're pretty much at the same. Make sure you don't meet his gaze or your soul will be broken. So that's all you're gonna keep saying? And there's not very many options of places for me to go. I mean, I don't see no, like, sparkle on the ground or anything like that. Like, what, what's this hallway look like? Nothing. A bunch of nothing. Like, I still don't get what this door right here is. And I don't know what it means by don't meet his gaze. Who? The door is locked up tight. Maybe I can use that wire to pick the lock. Yes. All right, time for the Grand Lock Pick Championship. You kind of seem like a cat burglar right now. It's more like a jailbreak than a burg. In our case, all we're trying to do is get the hell out of here. <coughs> The door, the door seems to have been successfully unlocked. You did it! Fortunately, the lock was super old and not very complicated. Okay, before we go in, save state, bam, let's get in there. Okay, so I actually have to use the map to travel in there. Stupid. Oh, I don't like this music. Ghost, that's usually what this sound means. Uh, the hell? This isn't shaped like any classroom I've ever seen. Wait, what did you just say? Yeah. Uh, I just said this room is screwy. I mean, look at it. Get your Numa, have you ever said that before? No, of course you haven't, but I know I've been in here before. This is where we saw that little boy spirit. Oh crap, it is him. When the hell did he get here? No, you can't go near it. We have to get out of this room immediately. There's something very wrong in here. Yeah, even I can tell that much, but look over there in the corner. There's something in here. I'm going to go check it out. You stay here, and if things start to get out of hand, just forget about me and make a break for it, okay? Who put you in charge? Fine, go if you want. Just be careful. Whatever you do, make sure you don't look into that kid's eyes. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. So, I mean... Don't look into his eyes, just don't click on him. Don't go over him, like... Some sort of pulley mechanism. His exact purpose is unknown, but there's a large conspicuous lever attached to it. Probably couldn't hurt to pull this, right? Yes, pull it. We gotta do something. The lever slides down easily. Okay, it opened a hidden door at the custodial closet. Did that do anything? I don't know, just get back here. With pleasure. Oh, bye, little boy. So, that's how you, like, face the ghosts on here? You just don't click on them? That's a little lame. Okay, I'm gonna do another save state. You know, I just want to be careful here, because I'd rather not have to edit or replay any of this stuff. 
The lever appears to have opened a trapdoor in the wall, just wide enough for a person to fit through. Looks like this goes somewhere. I don't like it though. It gives me the creeps, even more than the pool or that classroom. Yeah, but there's a chance it might lead outside. Well, we have no choice but to go in. Alright, I'll go first to make sure it's safe. You wait here. No way am I letting you go by yourself. When it comes to ghosts and curses, you're about as clueless as they come. So it is the custodial room. I mean, this is the same thing. It's a small chest of some sort. What the heck is this? Take it. It's a small, fine, detailed accessory case made from tortoise shell. Its design is long outdated, but the quality of its craftsmanship suggests it must have been very expensive back in its day. Slightly shaking, it produces a loud, distinct rattle. There's definitely something in here, and based on the sound and the light weight of this, it's got to be really tiny. Not sure if we'll need whatever it is, but we might as well take it with us, just in case. A noise from inside the closet. It's an old space heater. Unfortunately, without fuel, there's no way to light it. Turning the dials accomplishes nothing. Without electricity, it's just a box. But wasn't the sound of TV static audible from the hall only a few minutes ago? Bitter. It's bitter. It's wearing down my back teeth. Crunch, crunch. Crunch, crunch. Ah, uh, that's why I said we should stop this. I want to go to karaoke again. But not with all this happening the sounds. My toenails are gone, so I can't walk. Quickly turned around to find Shinozaki excitedly mumbling something to herself in a low tone. Her whole body was slanted with her head leaning against the wall, and she was completely focused on one specific section of empty floor. Shinozaki? Shinozaki? Mind your own business, goddammit. What do you mean? Should I not have taken this chest or something? What's wrong? Shinozaki then began repeatedly banging her head against the wall. The motion was almost rhythmic, as if in time with the ticks of a clock or a metronome. Hey, cut it out. The hell is wrong with you? Always, always. You always do this. What was it you said? Because we're friends? Well, I can take care of myself. What's with that look? You just hold on a second. Uh, my throat is burning up. Ah, uh, it stinks. It's rancid. I have to run. Why would you do this to me? You're my sister. Well, you could die too. What? I'm lost right now. After stumbling around almost drunkly for a few moments, Shinazaki suddenly took off running. She leaped through the trap door and out into the hall. What the hell was that all about? Wait, this is no time to be standing around. I've got to go find her. She's certainly an interesting specimen. Who's there? I'm not certain where she came from, nor when or how she got here. She seemed to be about the same age as me. She looked mostly normal, but her eyes were much less vibrant than they should have been, appearing flat and lifeless like those of a dead fish. Her name was Naho Sanoki. I guess you could say I'm a medium come writer, come high school student, or something like that. Or I was, anyways, when I was alive. When you were alive, are you telling me you're a ghost? Regrettably, that's exactly what I am. Are you one of that little bastard's friends then? The hell did you do to Shinozaki and why did you trap us here in the first place? Oh my, I think there's been a misunderstanding. I, like you, am essentially a victim, though there's a little more to it than that, of course. Oh, so you were trapped here too then, and you, um... More importantly right now, the girl who just ran out of here seems to have quite a gift. Oh yeah, Shinozaki. And then it's just ignore the conversation. Wait, please, you wish to have a place at her side for a long time to come. I believe it would be advantageous for you to listen to my advice. At her side for a long time to come. Alright, but can you make it quick? Such a firm, cool response is very telling. Well, I'm listening, so what's this about Shinozaki being gifted? You're familiar with the concepts of spiritual mediums, shrine maidens, and shamans, no? They're all people with the ability to lend their bodies to beings that natural science can't quite classify. Beings you would call spirits or gods. They're people who take part in channeling rituals, basically. Possession much like the demonic sort you see in movies. So kind of like the taco from traditional folklore, then. 
Exactly, you've seen it, no? Your friend can take in the thoughts of the dead that fit about in these accursed halls and I'll put them through her own body. And note, I said thoughts, not spirits. They aren't souls, but rather the loose remnants of broken minds. Heavenly host is a frightening, unique place. So she is indeed able, able to channel them. Take it from me. She has a very powerful gift. Can you really call that a gift? She's not like you, you know. Perhaps not, but if you intend to escape from here, these talents of hers could prove most advantageous, provided, of course, she learns to control them. Control them? Well, you saw what happened. She wasn't in control at all, but rather being controlled by the thoughts of another. Think of it as if she had an enormous antenna on her head with an impeccable reception, 24 hours a day. Except that antenna was missing not only any means of changing frequency, but any sort of on-off switch as well. At this rate, she's bound to short circuit and break down, or worse still, she might lose a sense of self and essentially become a mindless radio. Are you saying there's no way to get her back? I don't know. Who's to say? That all depends on her. And on you. Well, then come with me and help me save her, please. I'm sorry, I can't do that, you see. I'm also trying to find someone who's important to me. And then she just fades away. I've done all I can for you. Whether this experience ends well or gets worse, again, depends entirely on you both. I wish you the best of luck. Ugh. Oh, another one? This was the big one. I literally couldn't stand up. I fell to my knees on the floor. And then that's shortly afterwards he meets up with Mike. Couldn't even tell you how long it lasted. Felt like it would never end, but eventually little by little it did subside. I stood back up and surveyed my surroundings, but as expected, the ghost of the girl was nowhere to be seen anymore. And this particular quake felt like it shook the very foundation of the entire building. Shinozaki was all I had on my mind. She was in serious danger. I just don't know what the hell is going on anymore. But if there's one thing I do know, it's that I have to be there for her no matter what. Shinozaki! <laughs> that yell was pretty funny. And that's how he met up with her. No really pisses me off though, that she kept talking to me as if it were totally ignorant about psychic phenomena, like a complete dimwit. But look at what happened to her, too gifted for her own good if you ask me. Wow, sounds like you and Shinazaki have had a pretty rough time in here too. Well, you seem to have done pretty well for being by yourself. Shouldn't Morishige have been with you though? Yeah, but he's not, I've been trying to find him. Ah, well, uh, considering how cool and collected he is, I'm sure he's fine, wherever he is. I mean, if he sees a ghost, he'll probably just furrow his brow and be all like, You remind me of a Shakespeare sonnet or something, you know? And since you and I ran into one another already, I know you'll find him sooner or later. Yeah, you're probably right. I'm sure I'll come across him eventually. Though, I guess there are a lot more places to look now that the hallway's back in one piece again. But there are two of us, and two pairs of eyes are better than one. There we go, that's more like the Suzumoto we all know and love. Okay then, let's get this everything we've got and find our friends. You bet. Shig, I know you're somewhere nearby, and that's enough to keep me going. I will find you, I swear. But before we set off, I call a bathroom break. Seriously? Sorry, I've been so scared and nervous since we got here. I guess it's taking its toll on my stomach. I get this way before production sometimes, too. Fair enough. Guess we'll keep an eye out for a restroom on our way then. Are we back to playing or is it still controlling me? It's still controlling me. Okay. With the gap in the floor here, board has been laid across at the makeshift bridge, but it's a bit unstable as it's quake. Best to cross with care. So what, are we going to get separated now? No? The stairwell is completely packed with death, making it virtually impassable. Fortunately, the last earthquake seems to have knocked many of them loose. With two people working in tandem, it should take shouldn't take very long to clear a path. What do you do with all these deaths, Kishimuma? We can just climb over them with a little effort, but they might all come crashing down if we make one wrong move. Yeah, let's move them out of the way. Just throw them to the bottom of the stairs. Oh, we're at the bathrooms. 
Yeah, we found a little girl's room. If you'll excuse me for a minute, then. Sure, I'll wait nearby. If anything happens, just call out. Don't uh wait too close, okay? It'd be kind of embarrassing if you, you know, hurt me. People worry about the stupidest things when they're stuck in this situation. I'm sorry. I don't care if I was a girl or guy. I'd be like, and I don't care if I'm with a girl or a guy. I'd be like, you were standing right next to me while I take a piss. Or shit. It doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> I don't care. Uh, I guess my stomach must be in pretty bad shape. Almost there. So glad there was a usable toilet in here. Alright, good to go. What's this? Did I hit my stomach on something? It's all red. When did this happen and how? Even if I had hit my stomach on something, who ever heard of someone's belly getting bruised? I took a closer look and found myself momentarily breathless. What? What in the world happened to me? A reddish purple bruise with like fault lines emanating out in four directions with my belly button serving as the epicenter. It almost looked like a weirdly colored spider web attached to my skin. What's wrong? No, no, Nothing. I'll be on a sec. Sorry to keep you waiting. I feel much better now. Glad to hear it. But then I tell you to keep your distance. What? I, I did, you were just kind of loud there for a second. You seemed startled. Is everything okay? Oh yeah, sorry to have worried you. So, uh, how about you? Are you good on the bathroom situation, or do you need to go too? Well, uh, the boys' room is kind of occupied when you open the stall door. There's this guy's voice that yells out, Shut the goddamn door. Oh, I can see how that might make it tough to go. Well, let's just put this out of our minds for now and focus on finding Shinozaki, okay? Sounds good. Why am I not saying anything about the bruise on my stomach? Is it because I'd be too embarrassed to show it to a boy? No, that's not it. My mind was racing with worst case scenarios popping into my head one after another. Kept hoping that this was all my imagination, all nothing but a nightmare. But it sure felt real and that was the scariest thing of all. Maybe I was sick, maybe I needed to go to the hospital. Couldn't stand all this uncertainty. But I didn't say anything about it. I just walked with Kishinuma all throughout the school building in search of Shinozaki. I thought maybe if I went with him, I might run into Shig along the way or at least find some clue as to, where his, as to his whereabouts, but no such luck. For one, you guys are all friends. Why would you abandon one friend to go search for another one? I understand, like, sorry, you just need to all work together to find everybody. Our search eventually led us back to the first floor. Having covered all of our bases, we set our sights on the pool, but just as we approached the locker room, so the game's playing itself now, I like this. Let's just do this whole thing, and then I just barely read you guys a book. <laughs> Even though it's pretty much like that anyways. Hey, did you hear that? Yeah, it came from in there. Did she jump into the pool? Who the hell is that? The girl who looked to be around middle school age had been laid flat on the floor. Both her arms were bound and her eyes and mouth were covered with sash like strips of cloth. She was obviously being held against her will. She was kicking both legs and writhing around frantically trying to break loose from her binding, but it didn't seem likely that she would succeed. Oh god, we have to save her. It was only after saying this that I noticed the bruises on her legs. Those weird markings looking awful like the ones on my stomach, or am I just paranoid? Regardless of what caused them or how they might relate to my own injury, this girl had markings like rope burns clearly visible on her slender thighs. They were particularly bruises that looked almost like leather, as they'd been signified something that was just beyond our ability to decide. Hey, Earth is Suzumoto. Oh, sorry. Hang in there, I'm going to loosen these bindings right now. Wait, stop! Take a closer look. This isn't going to be so easy. Grab my arm to hold me back. I was a bit confused, but did as he suggested, and it didn't take me long to see the problem. The strips of cloth holding this girl to the floor actually seemed to be rules of gods, and whoever bound her like this really did a number. The gods was stretched half-heartedly all across the room's furnishing. Several strands of it were then projected upward to the top of the nearest cubby shelf where they were wrapped around the neck of a plaster bus. And from there, they extended up to the ceiling where they were wrapped tightly around the handle of a bucket suspended into the air. 
suspended right above the girl. In other words, if we pulled on any bandages the wrong way or moved any desk, the plastic bus might fall, and if that happened, the bucket would spill right onto her. But what's in the bucket? I wonder what the hell is in there. Maybe it's nothing. But what if it's not? Help. The girl was thrashing wildly, unable to move or see, and too scared to call out. Sadly, this wasn't helping at all. It only served to pull the plaster bus closer and look to the edge of the shell. It was impossible to say whether or not she had any inkling of the threat that loomed literally right above her head. It seemed increasingly likely that she was the intent behind the trap. If the victim attempted to escape, she would only wind up killing herself. What do we do? What can we do? Don't panic, we just need to find some way of getting that bucket down from the ceiling. Can you reach though? I think we should remove the bandages on her face first and try to calm her down. Either way, there's no time to lose. We have to do something and we have to do it now. Okay, so this is probably one of them, you fail, you die kind of things, and the part's been going on for a little bit. I'm gonna end it right here. So, thank you for watching. Be sure to like the video and subscribe so you don't upload the next part.